Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Welcome to South Asia Newsline, I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 3rd of December. Terror incidents on decline, infiltration bids on rise in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan's foreign minister meets top Sri Lankan leadership to boost ties. And U.S. troop decrees in Afghanistan not tied to Taliban deal, says Esper. Now for all the details, India's Interior Ministry on Tuesday informed the lower house of the parliament that terrorist incidents have declined in Jammu and Kashmir, but there's an increase in the number of infiltration attempts from across the border after the government abrogated Article 370 in August this year. India's Interior Ministry on Tuesday informed the lower house of the Parliament Lok Sabha that terror incidents have declined in Jammu and Kashmir since the region was stripped of its special status on August 5. Junior Interior Minister G. Kishan Reddy said 88 such incidents have taken place between August 5 and November 27, down from 106 between April 12 and August 4. The ministry in its written reply, however, informed that there has been an increase in the number of infiltration attempts from across the border. During the 88-day period from August 5 to October 31st, there has been 84 such attempts, Reddy said. Reddy said security agencies continued to receive inputs about the intention of terrorist outfits supported and sponsored from across the border to indulge in terror attacks and breach security in Jammu and Kashmir. Indian government revoked Article 370 in August that gave special status to the erstwhile province of Jammu and Kashmir and bifurcated the region into two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, which officially came into existence from October 31st. Almost three months after India's Chandrayaan 2's moon lander crashed into the surface of the moon in the last stages of a complex maneuver, NASA has said that it has found its debris. The U.S. Space Agency has credited an Indian engineer for the discovery. NASA's moon orbiting spacecraft has found the debris of India's Chandrayaan 2 mission's lander Vikram on the surface of the moon. The U.S. Space Agency confirmed on Tuesday while crediting Indian engineer Shanmuga Subramanyam for the tip-off. Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO had lost contact with the lander Vikram following its launch from Chandrayaan-2 moon orbiter on September 6 this year when it tried to make soft landing near the moon's south pole. NASA said it released a mosaic image of the site on September 26 inviting the public to compare it with the images of the same area before the crash to find signs of the lander. Indian engineer Shanmuga Subramanyam was the first person to come up with a positive identification. I tweeted out to them on October 3rd and after that I also sent a mail to them on October 18th and uh, after that I got a confirmation from NASA today morning and uh, I was very elated to receive that email because uh, it was, uh, I was spending something like uh, eight to seven hours each day for four to five days on that. After the loss of contact with Vikram Lander, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi had encouraged the country's space scientists to persevere in their endeavours, terming ISRO's attempt a great feat. A successful soft landing on the moon's surface would have made the country only the fourth after the US, Russia and China to achieve the feat. Pakistan's former military dictator Pairaz Musharraf was admitted to a hospital on Monday in Dubai after he developed heart and blood pressure related complications. This comes as a special court and Pakistan had ordered him to record his statement by December 5 in prison case against him.
Pakistan's former president, retired General Parvez Musharraf, was admitted to a hospital on Monday in Dubai after he developed heart and blood pressure-related complications, according to media reports. Earlier this year, in January and then in May, also Musharraf was rushed to a hospital in Dubai after his health deteriorated. The former president, who has been living in Dubai since March 2016, is facing treason charges back in Pakistan for suspending the constitution in 2007, a punishable offence for which he was indicted in 2014. A special court in Islamabad hearing the case against him had last week ordered the former military ruler to record his statement in the case by December 5. Musharraf has dismissed the charges against him as being politically motivated. If found guilty, he could be sentenced to death or imprisonment for life. Moving on, Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi on Monday met the new Sri Lankan leadership, including President Gotabaya Rajpaksa, and discussed several issues of mutual interest to further deepen bilateral relations. Pakistan's Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi on Monday met Sri Lanka's newly elected President Gotabaya Rajpaksa during his two-day official visit to the island nation. Qureshi arrived in Colombo on Sunday night to meet the country's newly elected leadership and to convey to it a felicitation message of Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan. Foreign Minister Qureshi also held talks with his Sri Lankan counterpart Dinesh Kunevardhane in which he said both the countries have been supportive of each other in the economy and in peace efforts. The two leaders also discussed trade, investment and tourism according to local media. There's a lot we can do to uh, uh, promote our mutual interests. We have been supporting each other uh, in uh, economic terms, uh, in uh, attaining peace and stability, uh, on either side and uh, I look forward to a very fruitful engagement uh, with the new setup uh, in Sri Lanka. The Pakistani foreign minister's visit to Colombo comes just after the Indian government on Friday offered financial assistance of hundreds of millions of dollars to Sri Lanka. A 50 million US dollar line of credit was offered to fight terrorism as the two South Asian nations jostled to shore up relations with the new Sri Lanka leadership. U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper has said any future troop drawdown in Afghanistan was not necessarily linked to a deal with Taliban insurgents. Esper, however, said U.S. President Donald Trump's administration had been discussing potential reductions in troop levels for some time, both internally and with NATO allies. U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Esper on Monday said that any future troop drawdown in Afghanistan was not necessarily linked to a deal with Taliban insurgents. Speaking as he flew to London for a NATO summit, Esper said U.S. President Donald Trump's administration had been discussing potential reductions in troop levels for some time, both internally and with NATO allies. His remarks came after Trump last week made a surprise Thanksgiving visit to U.S. troops in Afghanistan and spoke of potential troop reductions from the country. Trump said he believed the Taliban insurgency would agree to a ceasefire in the 18-year-old war. There are currently about 13,000 U.S. forces in Afghanistan, as well as thousands of other NATO troops. Officials have said U.S. forces could drop to 8,600 and still carry out an effective core counter-terrorism mission as well as some limited advising for Afghan forces. In news from Nepal, Nepalese Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli in a video statement from hospital has assured his well-wishers that he's recovering after his appendicitis surgery. PM Oli was rushed to the hospital on November 26th after he complained of stomach ache. Nepal's ailing Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli has issued a video statement from hospital and assured his well-wishers that his health is improving. The Prime Minister on Monday released a video on Twitter and said he is recovering after his appendicitis surgery. The video statement came amidst his extended stay at the hospital in the capital Kathmandu, which increased suspicion that he was reeling under serious health condition. After that, को उपचार को क्रम लागने हो तरह 
मेरे स्वास्थ्य राम अगर बढ़ी रख सुधार भैर तर एट मेजर अफिश अपरेशन पीछे अब तैयार देखी रहने मेजर अपरेशन पीछे म उठे फिर बोल सकने साथीस सकने अवस्था में छु रचार हेन सकने अवस्था में छु Prime Minister Oli was rushed to the hospital on November 26 after he complained of stomach ache. Before his appendicitis surgery, Oli had been regularly visiting hospital after his transplanted kidney failed to function properly. He had underwent a kidney transplant in India in 2007 after both his kidneys failed to function. And in news from Bangladesh, the number of fresh dengue cases and the deaths by the viral fever have risen once again in Bangladesh. The total number of fatalities have climbed to 129 so far this year in the country. Three more deaths from dengue fever has brought the total number of fatalities to 129 so far in Bangladesh this year. The government has confirmed. According to a report by the Directorate General of Health Services or DGHS issued on Sunday out of the 129 deaths three were recorded in November last month 4011 more dengue cases were recorded after 16856 in September and 52636 in August which were more than the total number of patients in any past year according to DGHS Dengue fever is a disease caused by a family of viruses transmitted by Aedes mosquitoes. Its symptoms include severe joint and muscle pain, headache, fever, exhaustion and rashes. India's Eastern Odisha province is witnessing a global confluence of arts through the twin annual events of the Konark Festival of Classical Dance Performances and the International Sad Arts Festival. The 5-day ongoing festival promises to be a treat for art lovers. Hundreds of locals and tourists flock to Chandrabhaga beach on Sunday as the 8th edition of International Sand Art Festival kicked off in India's eastern Odisha province. 123 artists from across the globe including the US, Ireland, Denmark and Russia are participating in the festival which involves artists showcasing their talents through different themed sculptures. The 5-day long festival will follow the established pattern of day-wise theme based on which participating artists will create their work jahan par more than 100 sand artists participate karte hain aur usme bahut sare international artists different countries se aate hain jo renowned artists hain unke desh se jab bhi main jata hu out of country mein jab bhi participate karta hu to us type ka wo bhi hamare desh mein is festival mein participate kar rahe hain the international sand art festival coincides with the konark festival on the pristine chandrabhaga beach The Konark Festival celebrates Odisha's rich culture and tradition through colorful dance performances with the Konark Sun Temple offering the backdrop to the stage. Yeah, I have a special affection to dance because we also dance at home but we dance some different dances but of course dance is over something special and this one is connected with some history with also some uh, specialities of the culture and that's why we like it and especially that for we came here the event showcases the best of india's traditional and classical dance forms besides offering interesting insights into the rich cultural heritage of the country well that's the way it was in south asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again Terror incidents on decline infiltration bids on rise in Nidhiyaz Jammu and Kashmir Pakistan's foreign minister meets top Sri Lankan leadership to boost ties And US troop decrees in Afghanistan not tied to Taliban deal says Espa Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on twitter at @asianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we'll see you same time tomorrow good night
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.